We're back in Amiga 500 land this week. This is the machine that I put the accelerator into recently, the 14 megahertz clock doubled, 68,000 processor and one megabyte of fast Ranger RAM. But one other modification that was somewhat popular back in the day was to just change your stock 68K processor for a 68010 processor. So I thought, what about if we tried to swap out the 68K PLCC chip on the accelerator for a 68010? Is it going to make it any faster again? I suppose the first question is, since I ordered this from China, is this chip even real? Let's take a closer look at this thing. And straight away, am I noticing something somewhat suspicious? The text on this, it doesn't look straight to me. Or is that just an optical illusion? I'm not sure. It almost looks as if it's running downhill ever so slightly. You would like to think that Motorola, when manufacturing their processors, could at least get the text straight on top of them. The finish on the top of it as well, it just doesn't, it doesn't feel right to me. It almost has like a texture on it. Whereas normally you would expect the top of an IC to be smooth. Has this been painted? What about the pins? This was listed as new old stock. One telltale sign of a fake chip can often be that the pins are dipped in solder or been reflowed with solder. Some of them don't look straight. So I dare say this has been in a socket before and has been yanked out. There are a few scratches on the pins. I don't think that they've been refinished. But yeah. I do think this one is suspicious. And if it is fake, well, that would be a bit of a shame. See, the bottom of the chip is more what you would expect the finish to be. That's nice and smooth. The top definitely has a texture to it. I think what we should do is just get it into the Amiga and uh, see what sysinfo tells us because it does register the type of CPU you have installed. So before we do anything let's just boot into sysinfo and you can see there on the right hand side of the screen CPU 68000 so it has correctly identified the 68K chip on that accelerator card. After we run the speed test, it tells us it's running at 14 megahertz, 1.51 MIPS, 1454 dry stones. Let's swap over to this one and see what it says. Just look at the difference between those two chips. That one has a nice smooth finish on the top of it. That one definitely has a textured finish. Nice white crisp writing on the top of that. And rather dull brown writing on the top of that one. Okay, the chips are swapped over. First thing we'll do is just power up the machine to see if it even posts. You know, I suppose that this might just be a refinished. 68010 processor. Am I being hopeful at that? Let's switch the power on first. Well, it's started. So that chip obviously works. Let's boot the sysinfo though and see what that reports. And what do you know? 68010. So that is seemingly real. Let's run the speed test. Is it going to be any faster? And yes, it seemingly is. Ever so slightly faster. MIPS have increased from 1.51 to 1.62. Dry stones is also marginally higher. 
going from 1454 to 1552. Notice that it's picked up the 14 megahertz clock again, but it's seeing it as 14.6 this time. Last time it was 14.2. Yep, same results maintained. I suppose the slight difference there probably just comes down to one of the oddities of SysInfo. It isn't exactly the most accurate benchmarking utility, but everyone recognizes this, so it's just the standard. Right, I have to know, is this a refinished chip? So, cotton buds and IPA test. Um, what I mean by that, is that if it's a real chip, like this one here, scrubbing the top of it with IPA on a cotton bud does nothing. But if it's refinished, if it's painted, and we do that, you would expect the paint finish to come off. And no. It's not. So, seemingly, what we have here is a 100% genuine Motorola 68010 on which they left a rather rough finish on the top surface and uh, inscribed the writing a bit wonky. Oh well, I'm not complaining. It's a real chip. But here's the thing. That speed increase is about 7%. So is that enough that you'll notice it in games? What about in the likes of Frontier? So I'm just putting into that same rolling demo version of it that we used last time. Uh, that's not right. Well, I tried that a couple of times and every single time it crashes. Also tried running Dread and it fails as well and even going back to sysinfo after the thing's been running for a while it crashes throwing a guru as well now one thing i noticed is that the chip was getting quite hot certainly a lot hotter than the 68k and what i'm thinking here is that this chip was listed as a 12 megahertz part now okay we are pushing it a bit up to 14 but you know that would be fine what i'm thinking though is that is this refinished and is this actually like an 8 megahertz cpu and pushing it to 14 is just making it unstable we did try going over with the cotton buds on the ipa before and nothing came off but let's get a bit more aggressive shall we and let's try some nail polish remover so like the ipa this shouldn't have any effect on the real chip as you can see but what is it going to do to this one yep definitely something coming off it well it's definitely taken something off the top surface now feels a lot smoother in fact it feels pretty much the same as this one the text still remains, although it is a bit duller now. But one other thing I've noticed is that you see the likes of the Motorola logo. Well, I can catch my nail in that. Almost as if that has been etched into the surface of the chip. On this one though, that is perfectly smooth. As in, that text there has been printed onto the chip. The other telltale, I think, that this has been laser etched, although I don't think you'll be able to pick it up on the camera, but on each of the characters, there's like a little dot, almost where a laser would have started, you know, etching. And I think that is exactly what we have here. So I dare say this is a slower part. The top has been sanded down, it's been painted, and then etched with these part numbers it almost works though 
So I think what we'll do is give it one more try. And I'm going to put a little heat sink on top of it. Just to try and help deal with the heat. And I've put that heat sink towards the back of the chip there. Just on the off chance that this does work. Just so that there clears the keyboard. Right, let's try that again. Nope, still not working. Yep, it just doesn't work. And just to make sure I'm not going insane, I put the original chip back in. Yes, I've lost a corner of the socket. Oh well, I can always replace it, but it's working fine. That's what happens when you don't have the right tools for the job. You need to get another PLCC chip extractor. But anyway, original chip is back in. It's been running the Frontier intro here. This is on its third time round. It's perfectly stable. Unfortunately, the 68010, while I do think it is a real chip, it uh, just doesn't work on that at 14 megahertz. Or well, that one doesn't anyway. Now, despite all the instability problems, I was able to get Dread running for about 30 seconds. One cool feature of this game is top left of the screen there, you can see a number and that is your frame time. Now granted running with the accelerated 68K or 68010, that number is displayed incorrectly. But if we advance this to the point of where that door is opened, the frame rate drops enough so that the frame time is displayed correctly. And if we just pause things there, we can see with the 68,000, the frame time is 2.71. So you calculate the frames per second by taking the refresh rate of 50, divide that by 2.71, that gives us 18.45 frames per second. Running under the 68,010, our frame time is 2.69. Do the calculation, that gives you a frames per second of 18.58. So despite the synthetic benchmark, SysInfo, showing the 68010 as 7% faster than the 68000, well, as you can see here, in the real world, in games, there is absolutely no difference whatsoever. Or, well, the difference is so minimal that you will never notice it. So was there any point to this? I mean, even if this chip had a worked, is there any reason to install a 68010 in your Amiga 500? Be that on an accelerator such as this, or even just the original big chip? Why would you want to install a 68010? Well, SysInfo did show that 7% speed improvement so there are bound to be some applications out there that will run faster on this. Dread, on the other hand, well, it didn't show any improvement whatsoever. Okay, it was 0 0.13 frames per second faster, just at that one point where I had paused it. Who knows, that might just be a fluke. You could pause it a second later and this thing might actually be reading slower. I think it's just fair to say that in that instance, the game was running the same on both this chip and this one. Now, I was going to tell you all about an expansion card that I'm going to build to sit in line with this accelerator. I'm going to build an IDE 68K. That will give us an IDE slot. We can fit a CF card, get a hard drive within our Amiga 500, and I can run WHD load games. And I was going to tell you that you need one of these chips for WHD load. And if I'm being perfectly honest, that was probably the main reason I bought this in the first place. 
because you need the instruction set within the 010 to be able to exit out of the games without having to reset the Amiga. Well, turns out back in July past, WHD load was updated so that the exit feature works fine on the 68K. Don't need this anymore. So, is there any reason to install a 68010 in your Amiga 500? Especially if said machine is only being used for games? I would have to say, no. There is no reason whatsoever. Bit of a pointless video in the end, wasn't it? But at least we found out that that three, four pound CPU that I bought from China and don't really know where I threw it. It is a relabeled part. It doesn't run stable in here. And seemingly there is no good reason to install one in the first place. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.